Hi everyone and welcome to our live YouTube. It's our chat with Tom and Tammy. Obviously I'm Tammy and here comes... And I'm Tom. <laughs> here comes Tom. So if you're new to our channel, we welcome you. We're really happy to have you join our community here. We have a great group of people that consistently come every Sunday to watch our live show. And I am the creator of the blog and this YouTube channel called Nutmeg Notebook, where we share all about our whole food, plant-based, SOS-free lifestyle. So that's a mouthful, right? So the SOS stands for salt, oil, and sugar-free. But really, we are very, just very low sodium, I would say, because we still buy some condiments that might have some sodium in them. And we eat in restaurants. Um, that have vegan food, so we sometimes get I'm, some extra sodium uh, that way too. I'm so calm, cool, and collected. I need a little sodium to keep my blood pressure That's up. That's it. That's Otherwise, it. I would probably just <laughs> fall asleep. No, honey, you would not. That's a lie. Don't listen to him. Don't take my medical advice. <laughs> so if you've never been to our blog, please be sure to check out Nutmeg Notebook. Dot com. We have a ton of recipes there that we have not yet made videos for. And we have a large library of videos here on YouTube. Some are about weight loss and just plant-based lifestyle and others are recipes. So we're really happy to have you here today. Uh, also on Sunday mornings, for some of you who may not know, on our Nutmeg Notebook Facebook page, we do usually a live sometime between seven and eight as we go on our four mile morning walk. And so that's really fun. We have a group of people that love to log on at that time and chat with us in real time. So, um, and we had a little bit different path that we went on this morning. So that was really fun to share that with everyone. And um, this morning we talked about consistency, which is going to really tie in nicely with the talk that okay. we're doing tonight. Are we going to do housekeeping before you jump into this? Yes, we should do, Probably. I'll let you, I'll let you do the housekeeping. Okay, I'm in charge of housekeeping, I'm on the maintenance crew. Um, <laughs> literally, no, literally, honey, you are the, the maintenance, maintenance crew. I'm the guy. You're the guy. She says, where's the guy that's supposed <laughs> to fix that thing? Um, it's always you. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, everybody piled here in ahead of us. Welcome, everybody. Uh, Tiffany, thank you for that little super chat at the very beginning. I don't know where it happened because we got, here it is. I, I got, we got on a little bit late. Uh, Tammy has a bit of a presentation this morning. Uh, no, it's this afternoon. <laughs> Did you have your sodium today? <laughs> no. <laughs> My blood pressure is too low. <laughs> okay, we got to get serious here. Okay. If you have a question, uh, Tammy's going to do a presentation on the front end and then okay. please hold your question until she's done and then put four question marks before and after it. Some of you have seen some folks already doing that in the chat feed. That helps us spot those questions. Um, but she's going to present and then if you can hang on to your questions and then we, and ask them and we'll try to keep up with them in real time so I don't get lost in the chat feed hunting for them. Um, um, so we'll, we'll do that that way. And... Um, and today's subject is going to be about batch cooking. I don't think we mentioned that yet. So we're going to talk a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. That's true. A little bit about consistency and it, um, batch cooking. It's, it's about no, our no meal plan, our our not our not meal plan. There you plan. go. It's yeah. a not meal plan plan. <laughs> go. Okay. Well, first, for people who are new, I just want to show my before pictures and um, let you know that I used to be. 49 pounds heavier than I am now and it's a lot more fun being thin and I was a yo-yo dieter for like nearly 40 years. I went on my first diet when I was 17 and I do have a video all about my journey and uh, adopting a whole food plant-based lifestyle is what finally um, prevented me from continuing as a yo-yo dieter. So I love this lifestyle. I'll never go back to eating the way that I used to eat because this is so freeing. It's just amazing. So on our walk this morning, I was talking about how consistency really plays into being successful with this lifestyle. So, um, you know, the more you are willing to put into it, the more benefits you're going to get out of it. And so if you are only, you know, 
50% consistent, consistent with your eating healthy 50% of the time, you're only gonna get 50% of the benefits. If you're trying to lose weight and you're only being consistent with eating a healthy diet half of the time, well, you're only gonna be halfway successful. And so the more steps you're willing to take, the more changes you're willing to make, and the more often you're consistent with those, then the more successful you're going to be sooner. And so for some of us, we can dive right in and do it all at once, and that's pretty much what I did. But I also realized that not everyone is able to do that. And so if you do have to do it in baby steps and make your um, changes slowly over a longer period of time, that's okay. Do whatever you need to do to work for you, but just know that the more that you can change and the healthier you eat and the healthier choices you make overall in your lifestyle, then the benefits are just going to be greater for you and come sooner. And so, you know, I get a lot of emails from people who are upset that their weight loss isn't going fast enough or, you know, the changes in their um, glucose numbers aren't fast enough or whatever it may be. And I always wonder, you know, like how many changes have you made? Because I know um, in the past for me, as soon as I would decide that I was going to start following a healthier diet, I would want all those pounds to disappear right now, you know, and I wouldn't take into consideration that it had taken me months to put the weight on and all of the weight wasn't going to come off in a week or two just because I decided, you know, well now I'm gonna be healthy. Um, but that's a trap that we can get caught up in. So one of the things that really helps with being able to be consistent in choosing healthy food is to make sure that you always have healthy food around. And so if you follow me on Instagram or on Nutmeg Notebook Facebook page, you know that I'm always saying that if your refrigerator is stocked with healthy food, you will eat healthy food. So not only does it need to be stocked with healthy food, but it needs to have food in it that is prepped and ready to go. So I'm going to talk to you about batch cooking because when I first started this lifestyle, I was spending so much time in the kitchen because literally everything we make that we eat is pretty much made from scratch except for a few condiments or canned tomatoes or some no salt broth that we buy. But you know, I was making everything from scratch and I would start making dinner like at three o'clock in the afternoon just to have it done by five or 5.30. And I realized that, you know, this is not sustainable long-term because even though we're retired, I don't wanna spend all my time in the kitchen. I don't wanna spend all my time prepping food. I wanna have activities and have fun and do things. And so uh, I figured out how to batch cook for this lifestyle. And when I looked back at how I used to cook when I was raising our family, I batch cooked all the time. I was always doubling recipes and putting things in the freezer. So, you know, those weeks where it was really crazy and the kids had a ton of activities that I could still put a decent meal on the table. Now, granted, it was not plant-based at that time, um, but it's still, it's the same concept. So what is batch cooking? Batch cooking is prepping and cooking food more than what you can eat in just one day. So it's cooking extra food for the week ahead, or if you have a freezer and you have room in your freezer to put things, then you could be making meals that you will enjoy you know, two, three, four, six weeks from now. And it's a huge time saver. And so when you're getting out your pots and pans and you're chopping up vegetables and you're prepping things, it really doesn't take much longer to double recipes than it does to make a single recipe. And you only have to do dishes one time. And I love that because I'm all about saving time. So batch cooking will, um, it creates less waste because the fresh produce doesn't go bad because you've actually prepped it. And once you have the food prepped, you will eat it. Um, it saves you money because then you're not getting takeout from your favorite vegan restaurant 
or buying prepared food from the deli at Whole Foods. You spend less time in the kitchen throughout the week, which, you know, I love that because I want to go play with the grandkids. And there's less stress because you don't have to worry about what you're going to eat every day. And Tom calls it our fast food. So he's like, we got our own fast food right here in the refrigerator. And which is true because we prep things ahead of time so that all we have to do is heat them up. Sometimes so, when, we were, when we were still going out to restaurants, um, not currently, of course, but we would think, do we want to maybe go out and grab, you know, to one of our favorite vegan restaurants? And then you open the fridge and there was all that food and they're ready to go. And, it's, and, and I don't know. A good half the time, it's like, yeah, we have our food here, we're ready to eat. Right, so. it'd be like, oh, okay, we've got six salads left, yeah. and they're only going to be good for yeah. three more days. We better stay here and Think eat of our the money salad. We've saved on restaurants. Yes, yeah. we've saved a ton of money by doing that, haven't we? So there's something that's called decision fatigue, and um, it's it's real. And it is decision, when you're looking at psychology, decision fatigue refers to the deteriorating quality of decisions made by an individual after a long session of decision making. Is that like when I get up and, and sit up in bed in the morning and, and have to make the decision to do that and I feel fatigued? <laughs> no, honey, not yet. But it's the start. It's the start. Because it starts when the alarm goes off, if you set an alarm. Then you have to decide, am I going to, you know, hit snooze or am I going to shut the alarm off and go ahead and get up? And, you know, then the next thing is, you know, what, have, what am I going to eat for breakfast and what am I going to wear today? And if you have to go to work, you know, what route am I going to take to get to work? And, and then all the decisions that you make at work all day or if you're raising kids, all the decisions that you make all day regarding raising your kids or if you're watching the grandkids or you're doing volunteer work, whatever it is, by the end of the day, we have made hundreds of of decisions. Now they've done studies with um, like judges and doctors and they have found that their decision making really changes as the day goes on. And so if you have a court date, you really want an, a morning court date because the judges are more open-minded and fair in the morning versus the decisions that they make later in the day. And so I try to make all of my appointments, if I have a choice, to have them make um, appointments made in the morning because I want people to be fresh. I, even my haircut, I want my haircut in the morning um, because people make less good choices as the day goes on, which is really interesting. And it also happens with our food. So, you know, five or six o'clock standing in the ref in front of the refrigerator, trying to decide what am I going to make for dinner tonight is really not a good idea. Because if you're relying on willpower um, in order to eat healthy, willpower runs out. And when our our brain is fatigued. We don't make as good of decisions as we do when our brain is not fatigued. You put that on top of, by the end of the day, you're also probably physically fatigued. And then we're just not gonna make good choices. And Dr. Doug Lyle says that we are hardwired to seek out the highest calorie density food for the least amount of effort. And so at five or six o'clock, when you don't have anything prepared in the refrigerator, but you know there's a vegan pizza in the freezer, and it's maybe not the healthiest choice because it's full of fat and sodium, you will probably go ahead and choose that pizza in that moment just because it's the easiest thing to do, and it, and it requires very little effort on your part. So that's also why it's important if you want consistency, if you're trying to build some healthy habits and if you're trying to lose weight and you're trying to correct some health issues, then batch cooking is a really great thing to do. So here's what we do. We carve out about two hours twice a week to do batch cooking. I used to do it all in one day and it would take me about four hours and I just don't have four hour 
a four hour chunk of time right now that I want to donate to doing all batch cooking. And so I break it up into a couple of days. And what we do is we go ahead and we pre-cook rice, like Tom will make a big um, pot of rice, a full pot in the um, milky pressure cooker and then divide it up and put some in the refrigerator and the rest will go in the freezer. Now, we don't have to do that every week. Um, he is the big rice eater in the family. I'll eat it occasionally. And so he just makes it whenever we need it. Probably about every week and a half or so is because I'm, sometimes I'm making it mid middle of the week. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that way we always have rice and we're not having to make a small amount more frequently and it freezes beautifully and then it reheats quite nicely as well and so we'll make oat groats and we'll bake our potatoes and you know if i decide i want quinoa then i'll make some quinoa and i can make a whole batch of it and divide it up and i can freeze it as well we will make beans we also keep canned beans on hand though because i don't always get the beans made from dried and so we keep canned beans on hand as well now the priority for me every week, if only one thing could get done, it's salads because I batch prep our salads. And did you link to the batch, the salad batch prep videos? Uh, I, I, I linked to batch cooking videos, okay, but, but I didn't. Better link to the salads. So when we transition, batch salad. yes, yeah. there's a, a blog post and a video. When we transitioned to a whole food plant-based diet back in 2013, I read Dr. Furman's book first, um, Eat to Live. And he talked in there about how salad is the main dish. And so for one meal a day, his recommendation was to make it a big salad. And you know, you it's not just salad because you need some starch too. So, you know, you can add beans to it or rice or quinoa or you know, any any variety of things, but you do need starch in it. Are you talking about simple salad batch prep? Perfect. Now I did a search here on this nutmeg notebook site. There's a little search <laughs> box there and I wrote salad batch. And that's it how, came up. That's how easy this is. I just did salad batch and I get simple salad batch prep. Uh, um, blog post, which I, I'm sure includes an embedded video. So I'll just it should. do the blog post. It should. Link. Okay. And so, um, so we started doing that, but you know, after a year or two of making salads every day, dragging out all those ingredients, I thought, you know what, there's got to be an easier way. And so I started batch prepping the salad. So we also have a video. It's called, I think it's the top 10, Tammy's top 10 tips on making good salads or something like that. And it's just a video on mm -hmm. our YouTube channel on how to do it so that they will last. And there's an old, old video you might see, um, but I've changed how I do it since then. And in the video that Tom's linking to, I show you we made one pound salads, but now I'm only making them about 12 or 13 ounces just because um, I'm, I just haven't been able to eat the whole thing. Uh, for the last, I don't know, six months or so. And so I just started making them smaller because I was tired of wasting um, the greens. But here's the thing. If, if I had to drag everything out every day still, I probably would have given up the habit of having that big, beautiful salad. But we now know how important all of the variety of greens are, dark leafy greens for our... Um, endothelial cells for our gut biome. I mean, there's just so many good things about eating the dark leafy greens, as well as they um, help suppress the appetite. They help um, stop cravings because they contain a component called thylakoids. So Dr. Greger talks all about thylakoids in his How Not to Diet book. Um, he might have a video on it too. I haven't looked at the nutritionfacts.org to see if he has a video about that. But anyway, you can't go wrong with eating the dark leafy greens. Dr. Esselstyn recommends that you eat uh, six fistfuls a day of dark leafy greens. So um, if the salads weren't already prepped, we probably wouldn't 
keep eating them every day. But because they're already prepped, we can take them out. We like to chop ours up and um, I prep them for the week, but we don't chop them until the day we're going to eat them. And, and I talked all last week, I think it was, all about why we like our salads to be chopped. But we batch prep those. I do enough for six days at a time, and that just ensures that we're going to eat a chopped salad every day. And that just is a habit that we've gotten into, and it just keeps us healthy. I always, um, batch prep muffins. We have a, a quinoa banana oat muffin that is a favorite and I make a batch of those every week. I'll prep fruit. So Tom would not go to the trouble of, you know, cutting up strawberries and cleaning blueberries and uh, can I say that? Or cutting up a pineapple. I rinsed blueberries this morning for my cereal. Yeah, you did that today. Um, or cutting up a watermelon. And so we batch prep that too, because if it's already cut up and ready to go, then we're going to eat oh, it. Oh, you mean the middle? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna stop what I'm doing in the middle of a, a Tuesday or a Wednesday and go find a watermelon and cut it up. But no. I, I do help cut up the watermelon on the weekend right. and load it into the bins. Yes. So yeah, I do help cutting up the watermelon, but not... not You're on, not gonna, on a Tuesday, go, oh, I would like some watermelon. Oh, I have to go cut the watermelon. You wouldn't go cut the watermelon. You'd grab an apple instead, because it doesn't require any yeah, exactly. effort. Exactly, yeah. And so, um, and then I'll make sauces. So we love our chipotle nacho cheese sauce that we did a video on this last week. I make that for us every week because we can use it in a variety of ways. And then soup or chili or taco leno, lentils or our homemade marinara sauce or Alfredo. I can batch prep those items and then we can use them throughout the week or I might make a double batch of let's say the marinara or the taco lentils or soup or chili and then we'll have some for the week and the rest we'll put in the freezer. And because we've been batch prepping for a really long time, we have a nice variety of things in our freezer that we can eat. And we have a pantry, uh, a kitchen pantry freezer video on our YouTube channel that you can look at where we went through, we showed you our refrigerator, we showed you the pantry, we showed you the freezer. I think we even, while we were doing it, it was alive and people asked us to show them where the storage we, stuff we was and we did that. We everywhere, yeah. Yeah, and we went through yeah, our pantry, cupboards. That's called Pantry Tour. So if you put that in the search bar at the top of our YouTube channel, that, will, that video will come up. And sometimes I will even batch prep some vegetables. I will just, uh, we usually buy zucchini and Brussels sprouts and broccoli slaw and the super greens at Costco. And I'll go ahead and saute an onion and then and some mushrooms, some fresh mushrooms. And then I'll add a ton of vegetables. I just kind of, it's kind of like the kitchen sink vegetable. You know, it's just whatever we have in the fridge. And, <laughs> or it's a fridge raid. What is it? Why are I you know. laughing? Sounds like dump soup to me. Oh, but it's so much better. <laughs> and so I'll throw everything in and I'll lightly steam everything so that it is more al dente. And that way when I go to reheat it with some starch to use it as a meal, it won't be mushy. And I'll do like four or five days worth of that at a time and just put it in glass containers, put those in the refrigerator, and then the, when the lid comes off, the glass container can just go in the microwave and we can just gently reheat it. And then I can top it with Alfredo sauce or marinara sauce or the uh, Chipotle nacho cheese sauce. I can add some rice to it or quinoa or oat groats or some air fried um, potatoes to it. And then it's a complete meal, but I'm getting in a big volume of vegetables with it. So um, let's see, I got to check my notes. I don't want to lose anything. So you might notice that when I'm talking about our batch prepping, that I'm talking more about ingredients than I am about recipes. And so here's where we get, we get a lot of um, emails from people and we have the last couple of weeks. In fact, um, Fritz and Julie, if you're watching, um, they wrote and they wanted to know if I had any kind of a one week plan or a one month plan with my own specifications for menu planning. I, I can answer that. Okay. We do have a one week plan. 
you open the doors to the refrigerator <laughs> and grab whatever you want. Yeah, but this is a new concept for people. <laughs> okay. And so I do not have a meal plan. I don't use a meal plan and I don't have like different menu plans. And so what we do is we always make sure we have starch, beans, and greens, and then the different sauces that I was talking about, as well as we have like a lot of different um, condiments that we can use. So, you know, salsa, you can buy low sodium salsa or make your own salsas. And I have a bunch of recipes on the blog for salsas. And you can just take, we make a lot of what we call nourish bowls or Buddha bowls, where you take a bowl and you add some starch to it. So any of the starches that you like and some vegetables. And then we add like beans usually or legumes to it. And then you have a delicious bowl of food. And you can add a flavored vinegar to it. You can add mustard to it. You can add um, a vegan cheese sauce, a marinara sauce. You can just change the flavor of things depending on how you top it. And then of course, fresh herbs make a huge difference. So I always have cilantro and um, basil and usually some mint. And so you can really change the flavor of it by adding some uh, fresh herbs to it as well. So that's why when I make the vegetables, when I was talking about sauteing the vegetables, I leave those plain because since I'm leaving them more plain, then I can make those, I can flavor those um, more Asian, Mexican, Italian. I, you know, it just allows me to do different things with it throughout the week. And so rather than having, you know, we're going to have chili this day and lentil loaf this day and um, uh, something Italian this day, we don't do that. We don't plan it out like that. From a, from a strategic Using strategic terminology, yes, our meal planning kind of occurs from the five thousand foot level, not at the five foot level, <laughs> where we, we you know we we don't have a specific meal plan, but we do have a, a plan, but it's not planning out specific meals. Yes. Oh, we have a speci we don't have a specific meal plan, but we don't have a plan for for specific meals. It's the same thing. Okay. So, but what we have done is we've automated how we eat. And if you watched last week's uh, Sunday live show, we took you through a day of food, what we eat in a day. And we showed you that Tom eats the same breakfast every morning. I usually don't eat breakfast, but for some health reasons right now, I am eating breakfast and I'm eating the same thing every day. And I have a chopped salad for my lunch every day and Tom eats his at dinner time. And so, we have automated those meals. And so that's 14 meals that I know every week what they're going to be. We need to lower your mic a bit. Your, your necklace is bumping the mic. Okay. So I need to drop this down. Or do you want me to just take the necklace off? Let's try that. Okay. Um, so I know that, you know, we know exactly what he needs for breakfast every day. We know what I need for breakfast every day. And because we eat a chopped salad for one of our meals every day, then all we have to do is we have seven meals then for the week that we don't know ahead of time what they're going to be, but we know they're going to involve vegetables and starch and usually beans. And so that just makes it so simple and easy. And then, you know, if we decide we want to have veggie burgers or a lentil loaf or like last night I made a, um, a gluten-free pasta and pulled some marinara out of the freezer and added lentils to it, then, you know, we can do something like that and it's simple and easy. And if I'm going to make, like if I decide on a Saturday that we're going to have a lentil loaf, I'll make two of them or veggie burgers. I'll make a double batch of veggie burgers and then I'll divide up the extra and I will put it in um, single servings so that it and put it in the freezer so that it can easily be pulled out of the freezer in the weeks ahead to make very simple meals. So um, and if you follow me on Instagram 
or on Facebook you will see I post about four or five times a week what we're eating what I'm eating in the day and so you can see how I pull my meals together because I'll show you you know that these were potatoes that were batch prepped you know these were um, sometimes I'll use veggies from the freezer I'll use frozen vegetables and and I show you how easy it is to put together meals just from stuff you have in the pantry and in the refrigerator or maybe that you've batch prepped ahead of time for the freezer. Um, do you have any questions about that? I'm sorry, Anything? I'm I'm a sentence or two behind you. You uh, are? Oh, because you're listening. Yeah, there's been Am some... I still making noise? Is it my hair touching the mic? Nothing's touching the mic that I can see. I didn't know if it's your bracelet bracelet clanking. It seems okay now. So Okay. I'll try not to make my bracelet. Uh. So in order to do this, you need to have a well-stocked pantry, a well-stocked spice cabinet, and a well-stocked refrigerator. So, and what that's going to look like is going to be a little bit individual um, because it depends on your personal taste preferences. So I can tell you that in our pantry, we always have dried beans and canned beans. We always have grains like rice and quinoa and millet and oats and oat groats and wild rice and a variety of lentils. We have canned tomatoes, tomato sauce and tomato paste. We have flavored vinegars. We have, and they're without added sugar or salt. Uh, we have nutritional yeast, unsalted mustard. We also always keep flax meal, hemp seeds, chia seeds, a variety of seasonings, you know, all different kinds of dried herbs um, and spices, table tasty, which is a salt substitute, of course, a variety of potatoes, Yukon gold potatoes, sweet potatoes, Japanese sweet potatoes, yeah, those are my favorite. You're going to want to... Uh a lot of this stuff will be shown on the pantry tour. Yes. Yeah. And on the Hannah, pantry tour video. Hannah yams. Tom likes little new potatoes. And when available, winter squash, like kabocha squash and butternut squash and Hubbard and um, the spaghetti squash. And we can have, well, I actually have one in the pantry, a spaghetti squash right now. And I used a kabocha squash. Um, today for something that I made and then of course onions I like red onions and yellow onions and garlic and shallots and dried mushrooms and unsweetened apple juice and a little bit of dried fruit I use it sparingly because it is very high calorie density and then in the refrigerator we keep unsweetened almond milk and tofu because Tom really likes tofu and corn tortillas that don't have any added oil or salt and then greens, baby kale, baby spinach, romaine, collard greens, green onions, carrots and tomatoes and zucchini and yellow squash and Brussels sprouts and shredded carrots and purple cabbage and broccoli. I mean, that's you know, our Costco shopping that's list. That's our Costco shopping list pretty much. And then I always keep fresh limes and fresh lemons, but I also, because of the pandemic, we don't run to the store when we run out of something. And so I also keep some of the bottled lime juice and bottled lemon juice. And I also, um, you know, if my limes or lemons are gonna start to go bad on me, I'll go ahead and juice them and put them in ice cube trays and I'll have some of that in the freezer. And of course, fresh fruit and fresh herbs. And then we do keep a supply of the Well Your World sauces and salad dressings on hand. And those are a line of SOS free sauces and dressings and those are also perfect if you don't want to make your own salad dressings or your own sauces those are great italian <clears throat> tom loves the italian um, well, salad world. dressing italian thank you dylan Holmes, it, for that one yeah and i like the um sweet heat is really good and then the sauces there's an asian sauce and an indian sauce and ketchup and barbecue sauce and those are all wonderful and you can really flavor up the buddha bowls or the nourish bowls with those and you know have pick a different flavor every night and then of course frozen corn and mixed frozen mixed vegetables frozen blueberries and cherries and mango are what we keep in our freezer and you know i will buy some bags 
of um, frozen vegetables to have on hand, especially now because if we run out of the fresh, we are only going to the grocery store once a week. And so it's great to have some frozen options on hand as well. Uh, fully, Julie's bringing up a good question. Yes. A lot of our diet is dependent on reheating stuff that we batch prepped in the refrigerator. Yes. And, you know, we choose to use our microwave for that. Uh, some folks either don't have a microwave or choose not to use a microwave. Yeah. You must uh, be warm. You're perspiring there. Yeah, it's warm under these bright lights. And, and while I'm drinking hot tea. <laughs> you um, silly. You were hot before it started. You um, should have had something Well, my cold. blood pressure was so low, I was just trying to... <laughs> 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 anyway... Uh, anything we do in that microwave, you know, when I was a kid, they didn't exist. And so we reheated stuff gently on the stove. Uh, we do actually use the toaster oven. We don't only use that thing over there on the counter for, as an air fryer. Uh, we do use it as a, as a little oven. So, well, I can take, okay, so we'll batch cook corn on the cob and I'll take um, corn on the cob, a frozen veggie burger, or a piece of lentil, frozen lentil loaf, mm -hmm. and some vegetables or some potatoes, and put that in the air fryer as and a way warm, to heat warm it, it up. up in there. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you know, gently heating stuff up on a pan on the stove. That uh, works too. You know, I, I, you can even if you have a big frying pan and the plate sits right on top of it, you can even set up, make yourself a little what is it, like a chafing dish thing. Yeah. A little bit of water in the pan, then the plate, and then the lid of the pan on top of the plate to warm it up that way. So there's a lot of you know ways to warm things up short of using a microwave. Oh, absolutely. So. And we use the air fryer a lot for reheating things because it gives everything a wonderful texture um, and it does it very quickly. There's also a way to heat up leftovers in an instant pot and uh, it's called pot in pot. I've actually never done it myself, but if you Google it, you can find some YouTube videos on how to to do that and you can you know you put water in the bottom then you put a rack and then you put a dish with you know one item in it and then you layer the um, dishes on top of each other and you can heat things up in the um, pressure cooker and so um, that's another way to do it because yeah we know not everybody has a microwave and not everybody likes to use a microwave um, Dr. Greger from nutritionfacts.org has read all the studies and he says it's perfectly safe to use a microwave and so we use a microwave but if you don't that's great use another method for heating them up and if you don't have um, a standalone air fryer like the Breville then you can get the Milthy crisp lid which fits on top of a pressure cooker it needs to be a six or an eight quart any brand of pressure cooker as long as it has a stainless steel liner and then it just sits on top and it comes with a little basket that goes inside the stainless steel liner you're never turning the pressure cooker on you're only plugging in the milky crisp lid and it works great so some nights if Tom's making chips in our big air fryer I will get out the milky crisp lid and get out one of our pressure cookers and I'll use that to heat up my food. If I'm, you know, doing um, air fried potatoes or corn on the cob or a veggie burger or something like that. Yeah. Oriana42 saying there's no crisp lids in stock right now. Uh, they, it, they did get some in because we got an email uh, a couple about, weeks a ago. couple weeks ago that they were back in stock, and so I actually included that note in our. Uh, I wonder if they've run out again. Email that uh, I sent out this morning to remind everybody of today's show. So I will have to check that out. You'll have out. to check it out and see. Uh, because, yeah, the, she, they, they, they actually sent us an email to ask us to let you guys know that they were back in stock a couple of weeks ago. Same thing on the multi-pot uh, pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the pandemic is causing them some production irregularities. Mm -hmm. so. so in the show notes, if you click on the See More for the show notes, then you'll see Tom link to some batch cooking videos and batch cooking blog posts that we have. So you can see um, what we've done. And I don't think we've done a blog post or a video on batch cooking in quite some time. And I've actually even simplified it because the longer we eat this way, the more simple we eat. And um, I just don't make a ton of stuff anymore because 
because we've been eating so healthy and so clean for such a long time, we're really happy with very, very simple food. So, you know, some quinoa, some air fried or steamed vegetables, and some beans and a little bit of vinegar. I'm a happy girl with that. And Tom can eat just like a great big bowl of steamed vegetables in some broth and some tofu and be really happy with mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And then, you know, if we have some fresh herbs, we'll sprinkle some fresh herbs on top. And we're just, you know, really content with very simple meals. Yeah, oats for breakfast, soup for lunch, and salad for me, the big chopped salad for dinner. Yeah. Um, and then we, you know, we throw in some other variables. You know, you made that that marinara sauce this week and did the the rice, whatever the spaghetti was made out of. It was made with corn, yeah. rice, and quinoa. It was a gluten-free yeah. um, pasta. But like you were saying this morning, because that is more processed, it really wasn't very filling. Yeah. Denver Hayes is asking, what is a nourish bowl? Yeah, a nourish bowl or a Buddha bowl is what we call when we just put a, a bunch of ingredients together in one dish and call it a meal. And so if you Google nourish bowl on the blog, I show one and it's just greens. The one I show on the blog is greens, rice, and some beans, and then a little bit of vinegar, uh, balsamic vinegar poured over the top. And um, it can also be like a burrito bowl. Um, and that would be, you know, rice and beans and corn and some salsa. And that becomes a meal. And you could add some shredded romaine to that if you wanted, or, you know, some mixed greens, baby greens or baby spring mix to that. So we just call those nourish bowls. Um, there's one vegan restaurant here that uh, used to have, um, oh, I just lost what they called them, trio bowl, because you could pick three things to have in it. And, you know, you could pick a grain, a green, and um, a bean, and that was called a trio bowl. And so those are just really simple meals to put together. And sometimes I'll do, you know, a potato, broccoli, and salsa, or my cheese sauce. And, you know, that makes for a just simple, easy meals because I don't want to have to do a ton of dishes and I don't want to spend, you know, two hours in the kitchen making a meal. And not that we don't have fancier stuff because we do, you know, so today I made our um, curry ginger butternut squash soup. But here's the thing. I didn't have any butternut squash. I had a kabocha. So I subbed the kabocha instead. Oh my gosh, you guys, it turned out so delicious. Oh, so do I have to go back through all of our blog posts and videos and change the name now? No. <laughs> but just know that, I mean, you can substitute. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You can substitute things. Change it up. Yeah. And I made um, our chipotle nacho cheese sauce. But when we went to Whole Foods the other day, they didn't have any Yukon Gold potatoes. And I had just a few left from shopping the week before, and I wanted to save those to bake those. And so for the chipotle nacho cheese sauce, I had just three cups of butternut squash that I had oven roasted and I had frozen. And so that wasn't enough to make the soup. So I used the butternut squash that I had oven roasted, and I replaced the potatoes and carrots in the chipotle nacho cheese sauce with the butternut squash and it actually it turned out pretty good i don't like the taste of it as well as with the potatoes and carrots so i'm letting you know right now that the cheese sauce is different this week oh. um, but it's good i had it at lunchtime today okay. and it's good it's a little bit sweeter because of the butternut squash so it's not chipotle nacho cheese sauce it is but it's with butternut squash instead of potatoes and carrots okay but it tastes good you're okay oh, look at it <laughs> Look at she's this messing with, I love that cheese sauce. She's messing with the recipe. Okay. Well, it's what it had to do. Oh, well, that's how we discover new and wonderful things, right? It is. It'll be a great adventure. And we're not going to the grocery store again until I'm Tuesday. I'm going to pivot. John Warren notices after having been plant-based for five years that they're eating simpler and simpler over time as well. Yes. And so. I'm also finding that I don't need as much food to feel full which is also kind of interesting, which is why I've started making the salads smaller as well. And um, so that works good. 
So, so any questions about um, batch cooking? Okay, there, there's probably going to be. <laughs> Catherine says Tom is processing. Tom is processing. <laughs> there's some there's some latency or lag time in my brain function. Yep. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard when you're. Yeah, used see, to Monica things. agrees with me. Don't mess with the cheese. How many of you have I tried know. the not chipotle not the nacho chipotle? The chipotle nacho, nacho cheese, cheese sauce. sauce. We have been getting some emails on that one. I thought it was going to be a good one. So Gina says it'll be just for this week and then life will get back to normal. Yeah, hopefully they'll have Yukon gold potatoes again. But you know, <laughs> here it is. During the pandemic, sometimes we can't get things that we normally are used to getting. Like before the pandemic, Whole Foods was never out of Yukon gold potatoes or Japanese sweet potatoes. You know, we could always get everything that was on our list when we would go there. Yeah. And um, and the same with like Trader Joe's or Costco. And that's not the case right now. Sometimes when we go, we can't get the things that we usually get. And so we're just learning to adapt and, and do things a little bit differently. So. Okay, there was a question up here about, um, I'm gonna have to scroll back up and find it, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Um, so let me talk to you about um, a couple things that we do that help us. Okay, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll go with the questions. We'll scan the chat feed. Um, this week we got a question from John, uh, Jacob Sandowski, who is the owner of Supercubes Company. And he wrote, uh, he wrote to Tammy and I, does the Nutmeg Notebook uh, have uh, viewers in Australia at all. We just launched our products there on amazon.com.au. So this is for, it's, is it Monday in Australia? This is for our Australian friends. I think it is. And we are working on getting the word out to all the folks in Australia who were interested in them before but could not get them. People were requesting them and, and they you know, weren't able to really ship them there without a tremendous amount of expense. So for all of you Australian viewers, we would uh, want you to know that in your Amazon.au. It's this is not an affiliate ship that has. We not, don't have an Australian you know, affiliate ship. We do ship. have these in our USA, uh, uh, our USA-based uh, Amazon shop page, but we're just getting the word out to you, Australian folks, that these now are available to you in in your very own uh, location. So yeah, and so for those curious. of you who don't know, these are um, silicone and they're freezer safe. They can also go in the oven. But um, what you do is you put your batch prepped food in here. So it could be lentil loaf, it could be um, your favorite soup or stew or chili, or it could be marinara sauce. Or and they salsa come, servings in the little one here. Yeah, so they come in two cup, one cup, and now half cup um, sizes. And then it has a lid, you put it in the freezer. Once they're frozen, then you can pop them out and you have these nice little bricks that are individual servings and you can put them in a freezer safe bag or a freezer safe container and that way this is freed up to be used again and so like today i used the two cup ones and to put my um, squash soup in so that i can freeze it and then i can pop it out and that way because a lot of times you know tom and i aren't eating the same thing at the same meal so if I want soup for dinner, then I can pop out a single serving of it and add some starch to it and heat it up and I'm good to go. So this saves so much room in the freezer because um, they take up so much less room than big containers, individual containers do. So if you don't have a lot of freezer space or you just wanna get more organized, the super cubes have been amazing and we learned about these on the vegan cruise that we went on in february because one of the gals that was the holistic holiday at sea cruise which was the pre predecessor to the holistic holiday at home, home series that we just finished up on friday yeah and someone who was in the audience watching one of our cooking demos told us about these and said you guys should really look into them so when we got home we looked them up and we ordered them and we love these these are so great and then i just got the little um, half cup ones and so i'm super excited to make my um, salsa and put my salsa yes i'll in make these. a video 
And he'll I make haven't a video. even shot it yet. <laughs> be patient, please. Yeah. But, so so yeah. we're excited about these because these will be fun for um, smaller servings of things, the little half cup ones. So these are yeah. back in stock. They've been out of stock for a while. And we also we have a direct affiliate link with them the, too. The link is in the show notes. Uh, housekeeping bed. This came up last week. For those of you watching on us on a smartphone, there's a tiny, tiny, tiny triangle to the right of the title of the video, and you click on that, and it opens up the show notes, and all the links are in there. And then, of course, those of you that are PC-based, it says uh, "Show More" in the little box below mm -hmm. the description. You click on that, and everything opens up. I didn't know about the tiny, tiny, like almost invisible triangle, but I found it on my smartphone and emailed the lady back, and we were able to find the information for her. Uh, Riri wants to know what the, the ratio of water to rice is when batch prepping. Will there be a video on how to batch prep rice in the Milthy? Uh, yes, I'm supposed to be doing that video. Uh, we've been involved in some of these other uh, more deadline type projects here recently. That is pretty high on the production list right mm -hmm. now. The ratio in the Milthy I use is actually one to one. Um, and so the short answer is, um, yeah, one cup of water per one cup of rice is what you do with that. And so, then how long do you cook it for? I put it in the milky for 15 minutes and on slow release. So um, the problem with one-to-one -one is when you rinse the rice, you have water already in the rice. Mm -hmm. And so... How do you accommodate for that? I put the dry rice in the, pressure, in, in the stainless steel liner first. I counted out, I make eight cups at a time, eight you know, full cups. And then I added eight liquid cups of water and took a note of the water level. And for in my pressure cooker, my six quart, my pressure cooker. <laughs> I heard that. Wow. The Instant Pot is hers. The meal fee is mine. Ooh, <laughs> so, territorial. Because that's the only one I want to use now. Um, if, you, if you put, in my case, eight cups of rice in and then do the eight cups of water, it came to the three liter mark. Now, yes, I made the jump from cups to liters, but that's the line that matched up with where the water level yeah. was. So, uh, so then I went ahead and filled it more with water, stirred it with the spoon to, you know, and rent, dumped the water and rinsed again and dumped again and rinsed again, go through that process and then refill to the three liter mark, 15 minutes, slow release. It comes out that uh, very grainy, uh, separates more nicely, more, more on the dry side. And then I freeze it when it comes out I, and I can just, uh, it comes out like grains of sand and just falls into whatever dish I'm doing without a lot of fuss. It's not mushy at all. I l so I that's, like the, that's the verbal version, but yeah, I'll do a whole video on that. I'll try to keep it at 10 minutes or less. So uh, uh, Laura wrote to us and wanted to know about containers for the freezer. What kind do we use and where do we get them from? So we are transitioning away from using the plastic containers in the freezer, but we were buying the Gladware, I think they were. Are they the red ones? Mm -hmm. The red lidded ones? Are those glad? The, the ones zip, with the Ziploc is the blue ones. Yeah, I and think. then the glad is the glad big ones are blue. Uh, the red ones are Tupperware, aren't they? No, they're not Tupperware. I'm gonna go you grab one and see. So we uh, we just would buy those at Target or Walmart or the grocery store. Sometimes the ninety nine Rubbermaid. Rubbermaid. Okay, thank you. Rubbermaid. Um, or Rubbermaid plastic containers. Um, and sometimes the 99 cent store would have those as well. And that's just, that's where we would get those. So, but since we now have the um, super cubes, then, you know, we're taking those out and we're popping them in um, freezer, other freezer containers. So that's been working. And then um, we keep getting a lot of questions about the model of the Breville, Tom and the model of our refrigerator. The Breville is a BOV 900. Uh, it's the original model, the original full-size version with 13 programs. Um, oh, somebody did make a, a note, you guys saw it, there's a, a sale right now at Bed Bath & Beyond for like 319. Wow, and you can use your 20% off coupon probably. Maybe so, so thank you for, uh, for posting that. So that would be a really good deal because you probably won't find it cheaper than that. Yeah. And then what's the model of this refrigerator? It's a GES28 
because it's 28 cubic feet. 28, and that's what's important. If you look at, well, you know, there's, there's a number of them that look similar to this. Some have ice dispensers, some don't. Some have water inside the doors. This one has water outside the door and an ice dispenser. There's a, there's a variety of models. This is the deep one. The 28 foot is a deep one. There's a uh, 22 foot or something that's the same width, but it's shallower. So, is that the one that Costco has? Because we saw one similar to this at Costco. Yeah. Also. It wasn't and as this, deep. This one has two ice makers. That was an <clears throat> option. We selected that. We, so it has an ice maker down in the um, pull-out freezer on the bottom, and then it also has an ice maker on top so that you can dispense ice as well as filtered water. And we do love our refrigerator because we can pack it full. Yeah. But just so you know, we have another refrigerator almost the same size. It's, I guess it's more shallow. It's not as deep. The one in the garage isn't yeah, as deep. Yeah, it's not as big. And it's probably so that's, 26 cubic foot. Okay, and that's like our staging refrigerator. So when we get home from grocery shopping, that's where we put all of the ingredients, the base ingredients. And then once we have batch prepped things, then this refrigerator gets full of the batch prepped food that we're going to actually be eating every day. And then anything that's bulk that hasn't been processed yet, we keep in the other refrigerator. Granny M has a question um, uh, about the Super Cubes. Yes, we are affiliates of the Super Cube company. Uh, we signed up with Jake and Michelle directly. Um, once, uh, did they find, uh, I, I forgot how we found them. No, we found them because somebody on the cruise no, told we were us about the them. Cruise. Oh, I sent them an email that we were going to, yeah, I sent them an email that we were going to be featuring their product on one of our live shows and they actually came on the live show and introduced themselves. Mm -hmm. So, um, and after we got to know them, they did sign us up to be a direct affiliate. And so we do get a small commission from that affiliate ship. We also do list them on our Amazon store. Uh, we do get a little bit more on a direct, uh, from, from uh, Michelle and Jacob's site, but any way you can get them is fine with us. And then, and then of course, Australia, we're glad that you just have access to them because they're a problem solver for us in the kitchen. And we want, want to share that information from every, with everybody. Absolutely. So, um, then Elizabeth asked me, um, on the celery juice that I've been making for my breakfast, um, how much celery does it take to make? And I have been finding that it takes about one and a quarter pounds to make two cups of the celery juice. And then she wanted to know what size my mason jars are. And um, this is the 24 ounce um, with the handle. And then I have a 16 ounce with a handle as well. And I'm drinking the celery juice because it's supposed to help with um, alleviating inflammation and I have some inflammation going on because of my problems with my sciatic nerve and it seems to be helping I, but I'm doing so many different things right now I don't know what's actually helping no. uh, <laughs> but the two days that I didn't drink it I had um, an increase in pain and so I'm um, continuing to have it probably for another week I've been doing it for about a month okay more questions yes um, Marianne has a question, uh, Marianne Khan, about what is my, uh, what's Tom and Tammy, what is your most recommended or most liked vegetables? If I had to choose, you know what, a variety of vegetables, because <laughs> yeah. our salads are just full of all of them. Um, if I had to choose one vegetable, like I was going to live on it, I would choose spinach. Um, because it's, you know, Not me. leafy, no... Because like romaine lettuce is, is just water. Spinach it has some substance to it. So No, but once you cook it, it's like it shrinks down. Shrinks nothing. down. I don't know. So, I, yeah, can't, I wouldn't I be can't, able to pick I can't, one. I can't pin That's one. like asking who's your favorite kid, and I don't have a favorite kid or grandchild okay. either. All right. And then so the other, I like them all. And then the other question, which I can't find, but I, do, I just remembered it. There was a question earlier in the feed that if you were looking at making changes in your diet and, um, and going salt-free and going oil-free, or going oil free for the uh, for the questions, which one would you do first? Which one is more important to go salt free or oil free? We're not doctors, so we can't answer that medically. The practice that we do is we're, we're, we're virtually completely oil free. And as Tammy stated earlier, a little bit of sodium leaks into some of our condiments. So 
But for a health standpoint, if unless you have hypertension, which is high blood pressure, if you have high blood pressure, you would want to get off the sodium. So it kind of depends on what your health state of health is. But oil, um, from a weight loss and a heart health, oil is very damaging. And so if you look up Dr. Esselstyn and oil on YouTube, then you'll find some really good videos and he explains why no oil. And Dr. Um, Esselstyn is the um, author of the book, How to Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. And um, that explains everything about oil. So unless you have hypertension, I would get rid of the oil first, I think, and then I would start reducing the sodium. And both of those are good things to get control over, not only for your general health, but also for weight loss. Reducing the sodium gets rid of excess water because your body, your, your body actually plumps itself up with more water to offset the excess sodium so that the percentages are, are more correct metabolic, met, metabolically speaking. Yeah. So yeah, reducing the sodium is going to reduce your size. So absolutely. It's true. Yeah. Um, Claudia Jensen is, is here from Australia. Oh, the, nice. There are about 600 of you, uh, <laughs> Claudia, uh, hanging out in Australia that watch our channel. So, so, um, so we promised Jacob and Michelle that we would let you guys know about those super cubes. And somebody did mention they found them also on Amazon. Yes, we do have them on listed on our Amazon page. I put links in the show notes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to... I want to make sure that I answered all the questions. Oh, oh pumpkin seeds. She likes spinach. She just doesn't like only spinach. Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> pick... Yeah, I like spinach and I use it in a lot of things, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't choose just spinach. That wouldn't... If I could only have one vegetable, it wouldn't be um, spinach. But, but I, yeah, I eat spinach every day, actually, because we include that in our salads. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gina's commenting that Chef AJ had uh, a chiropractor on from True North that, that talked uh, about this active release thing. We did get an email on that. We'll be looking into reading up on that. Um, we haven't had a chance to do much research this week because Tammy's been getting ready, getting her recipes ready to go into. Did you talk about this at the front I, end? I did not. Oh, this is the... Shall I, I've already opened it. This is the Health Science Magazine. Uh, these, these issues come out four times a year quarterly. They are jam-packed with basically everything that's going on in the plant-based world, including recipes, articles from uh, some of our, our keynote speakers. Here's one from Ellen Goldhammer and Tasha Myers. Um, so, so this is put out by the National, National Health, Health Association. Association. And in each magazine, there is a recipe spread in the back. And those of you that follow us regularly know we've already announced that Tammy is doing the recipe spread for, for the fall issue. So which issue is this? This is, this is spring 2020. So there's, there's you know, three or four, five pages here of recipes. And so those will all be nutmeg notebook recipes in the fall. Uh, some of them you may be familiar with, others may be new. There'll be, um, yeah. But we're, we're getting those assembled and cataloged and into the, saved up into the um, cloud files so that they can be accessed by the editor of the magazine. Yeah. So we're real excited about that. So, so if you wish, I included the healthscience.org email address in the show notes. And we signed up to be a member of the NHA last August. Last, last August. Mm -hmm. And we've really enjoyed getting these periodicals and being in touch with their community. So uh, it's $35 a year, and that gets you um, the whole annual subscription for these four magazines. Oh, and so, it also gives you access online to a all huge of library. the... Uh, a huge library of recipes and articles and so forth. Yeah. So... And, and I'm just letting you know, we, they, they don't, you know, they're a nonprofit, I believe. We didn't, we're not a, uh, you know, they don't have affiliates. We're just no. spreading the word on that. But it's $35 well spent to, to sign up with healthscience.org and, and be a member. Yeah. So. And we're real honored to have been asked to participate in the fall magazine with our recipes. So yeah. that's fun. Um, here's a great question for you, Tammy. What is going on? This is from PC Cornelius. What is going on with Hanny Yams in the stores? Have you noticed that Hanny Yams? They're Hanna so Yams, tiny. We, we do have them here. They're like 
like toothpicks. <laughs> Practically, yeah. So, so sometimes they're huge. They're like two or three pounds not for recently. one. But for weeks and weeks, they've been little tiny ones. A couple times we've just passed on them because they're so tiny. We just thought by the time we roast them, there will be nothing left of them. So, and the Japanese sweet potatoes also have been very small. So I think it's the time of year. You know, the potatoes are just really small right now. Oh, here, here's a and comment on this. As time goes on, they will get bigger. Yeah, Radiant His Presence says it's not henna yam season right now. The Japanese sweet potatoes are huge right now at, at their location. Um, and uh, Raining planted their own honey yams this oh. year. Oh, well see, even our Japanese sweet potatoes here have been small. Yeah. So quite often I'm having to have two of them um, to, to make it filling enough. To, yeah. Because two of them will equal yeah. the size of one that I used to buy. Yeah, Randy, thanks for the link for healthscience.org. Appreciate that. Um, okay, I'm going to... I have a swing up and see what else you can find. Yeah, I have a spot here. I had marked so it. I'm curious about how many of oh. you um, do batch prep food right now. And I also want to say that um, people do it differently. And so, like Chef AJ, um, I asked her how she does her batch prepping, and she just does it. She doesn't have a specific day. She just does it when she starts to run out. So when you know when she's down to her last couple Hannah yams, then she goes ahead and roasts more Hannah yams. When she runs out of salad, then she batch preps a big container. She puts hers in a Tupperware container and puts it in the refrigerator. She has one of those that's supposed to help the produce last longer. Um, another gal that I talked to who is a nurse and works full time, she um, she works weekends, and so she has a couple of batch prep days during the week. One day she'll make her salads, the other day uh, she will make soup or stew or chili or something that she can take. And she said she found for herself that in order to make it work for her to be able to take things to her long shifts at the hospital, that she puts everything in the containers that she would use to take in her lunch box. And so when she batch preps the soup, then she goes ahead and puts it in the containers for her lunch box. That way, when she's ready to go to her shift, she just opens the refrigerator, she pulls a salad, she pulls um, her soup, and she pulls her fruit. And so that works well for her. Other people I've talked to have specific days like one gal does all of her starches on one day she does like marinara sauce or cheese sauce or makes her own ketchup or whatever it is that she needs she does sauces on another day and then a third day then she does like soup stew chili taco lentils or you know whatever it is that they're eating that week and so she does hers a little bit. She also works full time. And so she only has like an hour to an hour and a half on those days to do some batch prep. So it can look a lot of different ways. And so it just depends on your schedule and what works for you. Thank you, Tammy. Uh, a question here uh, in terms of batch prepped cheese sauce from Rhonda Jeffrey. Um, can you freeze the cheese sauce? I have never frozen the cheese sauce but other people have told us that they have and that sometimes it does separate once it's thawed out. And so what they do is they just take and put it back in their Vitamix and process it again. They put it in and let it run so that it all gets incorporated again and that it works fine. Now we've never tried freezing it because we Somebody eat eats it up. We eat the whole batch between the two of us. Within the week. Within the week. I do a container for Tom and a container for me. I make one batch and divide it. But you could also cut the recipe in half and only make half of it if you wish. And I always tell people, take a small amount of it, like one serving, and freeze and see how that works for you. And I just never have any extra left over to freeze because we both want our whole container every week. So I haven't mm -hmm. tried freezing it myself, but people tell me that they do and it works. Somebody told me they froze the Alfredo sauce and that did not work. And I have not tried freezing the Alfredo sauce. I did just make some 
today. So I could put some in a little container and and see what happens. And salad dressing, the creamy balsamic dressing, I've never frozen it, but many people have told me that they freeze it and that it freezes fine. You can also freeze hummus and every soup, stew, and chili, and taco lentils, and lentil loaf, and veggie burgers, all of those I freeze. Speaking of freezing, um, do the fro- with our new super cubes, mm-hmm. and we freeze up what I call now cube soup. Cube I'm gonna soup. Go, I'm going to go out and grab a cube soup. Do they stick together, uh, you know, because we, of course, take them out of the blue things here and pop them into the... Into the freezer bags. The freezer bags. Uh, if, if they, if you, in the process of bagging them up, they, you know, get a little bit of wet on the sides, then, then they refreeze. They may stick together a little bit, much like ice cubes that have been sitting in the ice cube tray stick together a mm-hmm. little bit, and you have to give them a, a pop with a spoon, or in my case, my fist, <laughs> to break them apart. I've not had that be an issue though, because I take them out when they're frozen and bag them up right away and get them right back in the freezer. Um, the the one cup ones have enough mass to just even a, a you know grab them and, and give them a little twist and they come apart. The uh, just like bananas, kind of like how when we freeze yeah. our bananas and our bananas are all you have to kind of break lined them up, apart a little bit. kind of break them up. So so yes, they stick a little bit, but not so much so that I haven't been able to just jostle the bag and break them apart. Um, we'll find out more when we freeze up the, the salsas and, and the uh, other condiments in these little half cup ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, when you when you rebag them, you want to be prompt and, and get them in cold to cold and don't give them a chance to get you know any condensation it, on the outside because that's what refreezes and sticks together. As if they start in, to defrost in the, a little in bit. In the world of frozen things. Mm-hmm. So um, hopefully that answers that. Did we get all the printed questions that, that I pulled off the printer? Yes. I'm looking at my notes and I believe we did. There was a question, there was a conversation going about jazzberry rice. I do not know uh, what that is. Um, I think that's the one that we just got in our um, nourish box. Oh, and then, or, and or palmini pasta. Palmini pasta. I've never heard of palmini pasta. Okay. Oh, uh, the nourish box came out. That was you posted that on Facebook. Not yet. I haven't yet. Oh, okay. You're going to be. I've been too busy this week. Okay. Um, any plans for videos using the Milty Crisp lid? We we need to redo our Breville Smart Oven Air Fryer video from over two, uh, well, three years ago now. And when we do that, we'll probably do a, a formal air fryer video, including both. I would presume. Well, I think we do them separate. Do them because separate, not so everybody they're, has they're searchable both. separately, yeah. Yeah, I'll probably do them separate. So um, there is one, our, our first but one. But everything what, that I've done for the um, Breville, you can do, do in, in the Milthy. Mil- it's just a smaller um, amount. So yeah. you can do asparagus. That's for Mary Jo. I'm talking you about do, your question, Mary Jo. You can do all your veggies. You can do the stuffed mushrooms. You can do the potato balls. Um, all the, so all of the videos where I showed how to do things in the Breville, you just do them in the Milthy. So here's a note, the Milthy, because it's much closer, go, it cooks faster than the Breville. And so sometimes I'll turn the temperature down. If I said 400 degrees in the Breville, I might just do like 375 or 380 in the milthy because the milthy is much closer um, and so the food gets done faster which is really great like when i'm doing my potatoes and stuff in the milthy it goes really fast so um, so just know everything in the breville can be done in the milthy i've also used the new ones have a dehydrator function they have four settings for a dehydrator and I made um, granola in it. I made my dehydrated cookies. Both of those recipes are on the blog. I think we made a video too of doing those. The, um, in one of our lives, I showed how to do the crispy um, chickpeas. I also did those in the Milthy, use the Milthy crisp lid and that worked great. It's just, you know, you have to do it in batches because it's uh, smaller, um, but that worked great too. Fooly Julie. Fooly Julie, thank you so much for the um, super chat. 
We really appreciate that. She says, thank you for sharing all your wisdom and expertise with us. It helps more than you'll ever fathom. You're the best. Well, thank you so much. That that means a lot to us. It really does. And thank we appreciate you so much. that. Uh, Ali Oakley is telling us that palmini pasta is just hearts of palm with an artichoke taste. Oh, nice. So, so where do you find it? Do you buy it online? Do you get it from Amazon? Do you find it in Whole Foods? Um, we don't eat a lot of pasta, but when we do, we try to do the ones that are made from lentils or quinoa or, or like soy, yeah. the one that we had today. Or you like the soy pasta really yeah. well. So that's yeah. good. Thank you. See, we're learning things from you guys too. Yeah, Pumpkin Seed is asking how our Arrow Grow Garden is doing. Our, it's crazy. <laughs> we're, we're over, we're like at 100 days now on this thing. And the, the, uh, the, the basil has turned into like trees. There's three of them left of, of all of the original things. We're still growing two of the Givanese basil and, and then one Thai basil. We cannot eat this stuff fast I enough. We, we use it, I use it in my lunch. We put it on our, with Soup. our evening salads. These plants are growing as fast as we can eat them. Faster. And, and the, the Thai basil actually has now got like a wooden trunk mm -hmm. <laughs> at the bottom. So, so they're uh, pretty amazing. You know, I, I, I ordered another set to start a new, you know, fresh batch of stuff. But these things just keep going. So uh, it's starting to get kind of too big now. So uh, It looks great. So yeah, we, we eat off of it literally every single day. And it's growing as fast as we can eat the, the basil. But it's anyway. been really nice to have the fresh All, Yeah. Then when we were basil. Whole Foods uh, the other day, I saw that they had the potted ones in there with the single stock. And it was like $4, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, and we've been, and, but we would eat, you know, we would be spending, you know, $20 a month on basil mm -hmm. if we were buying it as much as we're eating now. Mm -hmm. So, and, and this anyway. doesn't go bad. So it's really nice, you know, to have it fresh right here. So we've really yeah. been enjoying it. And then our tomato yeah, plants. Yeah, we should, we should post a little picture of that on Facebook or I did something. a couple of weeks ago. I posted okay. a picture of yeah. how the basil yeah, was Yeah, pumpkin seed, check nutmeg notebook Facebook and scroll back. You'll see a picture of what's going on with mm -hmm. that thing. And our tomatoes are doing really good. So the little um, cherry tomatoes have been doing really great. Um, we've only had a few of the big tomatoes, but yeah. they've been very tasty. And the little cherry ones, oh my gosh, I had those on my salad. I made the Mexican chopped salad Yeah. with the um, oil-free tortilla strips for my lunch today. I didn't have lunch till 2 o'clock. Um, but I put those cherry tomatoes cut up on it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they added so much yeah. flavor. They were so delicious and so sweet. Yes, they are very sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and somebody asked earlier up in the chat feed, we're, we're growing tomatoes out there just because we thought we go through so many cherry tomatoes, we thought that would be fun. And so now we're starting to get more tomatoes than we can keep up with, mm -hmm. can keep up with. But it's, it's just a, a, you know, stepping into a little bit of gardening with that. Vigana, thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate it. You're, she's got you on the big screen. Oh too. my gosh. So thank you so much. Uh, John Warren, thank you so much, John. Uh, for coming back to that question. John had a question at way, way at the top of the chat feed. And okay. I actually asked him to please repeat it when we got to the questions. What is your nighttime sleep routine? This morning, you just talked about the morning routine. Um, we try to get to bed by 10, 1030, and then just wake up organically, I call it, which usually is about 530. Don't set an alarm. Um, Sometimes I go to bed at nine, though, and yeah. so, or sometimes so I fall asleep. She'll fall asleep on the couch at nine, and then she will wake up at four thirty and be working on 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 social media on the Nutmeg Notebook channels while she's still in bed. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's the the you know that 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 glow of the smartphone that that Sorry. brings me around. Margot Tobias, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that very much. That's very sweet. Thank um, you so much. And then John had, these things are scrolling along here. Um, I thought I saw John had another entry. Um, yeah, what is your nighttime sleep routine? You just talked about the morning routine. Yeah, we try to get to bed by, by 10, 30, uh, 10, 10, 30 as a rule. Yeah, not usually for me, not yeah. past 10. Yeah. Just because I, I fall asleep. A, yeah. a lot of times I'll fall asleep if we're watching something on TV. Yeah, and then when we're being totally good, that part of that routine also is to cut off eating by 7 o'clock so that we're not eating uh, for the last three hours of the day. And then you have a good long intermittent fast of about 12 hours or more 
if you don't eat breakfast until you know after mid morning uh, until seven after seven o'clock the next morning. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Riri, uh, the the veggie grower we have in the kitchen here behind the sink is an Arrow Grow by Arrow Garden. There is a link in the show notes. Uh, we are affiliates of them. Oh, once we got it, started growing it, we got in touch with them, and and they did they did sign us up because we figured that. It, since we're cooking all of these, Tim cooks all these amazing recipes, that would be great to have fresh herbs all the time. Well, our round. friend Shada from Healthy Cooking Tip with Shada told us that she was given one as a Christmas gift last year and she loved it. And so she was like, you need to get you one of these. And so, so we did. And, and so we, we are loving it. So that's how we, how we got involved in that. Um, oh, I got to push down. Okay, uh, here's some more questions. Uh, Judy is new to our channel. Yes, Judy, there's um, about 150 videos on the YouTube channel you can check out, hundreds of recipes on the blog. Uh, and if you want to keep up on what Tammy's, um, you know, preparing for food on a daily basis, you, although you'll see that it's very consistent, um, but she always makes it look, uh, you know, pretty a different way. You can follow Nutmeg Notebook on Facebook to so get I, that. I see that there's a little bit of chat going on about what, what do you do when you overbuy? So we have a video about that, about how to, um, I think, it, did we call it kitchen hacks, maybe? It was a video about how to um, not waste food if you bought stuff that is starting to go bad, um, what you can do. So uh, we did, I think it was a live video that we did. So if you go back through and look, it was a, some months ago. Um, but we talk about like if you have greens that are not going to make it, what are you going to do with those? Or tomatoes that start to get a little bit puckery. Or um, I, I covered a variety of issues. So um, go back and look for that. And do you remember, Tom, did we call that kitchen hacks? Yeah. Or was it like how to say how not to hacks. waste or how not to waste food or something? Um, and so I gave you all the hints and tips that, um, that I had about that. So. Okay, so we have a question about, can we have a quick look at the garden? So, oh, oh, okay. So I'm and did you, did you recognize Margo? She gave us a super chat. Margo Tobias. I, I think so I much. did, but thank you, Margo. Again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just in case you didn't. Okay, I'm going to pivot you guys around and let you see this, this, this uh, forest here. So uh, bear with me just a second okay. as I swing this around. There's that guy in the corner. And it's looking good. I zoom in a little bit. Tiffany, there's some more flowers. Those were a present that from David, David from our, our son. son. Yeah. So yeah, there's the, the there's the basil trees. You can see the, the trunk on the bottom, though they're getting they're turning into bushes. So Pretty crazy. So it's time. It's time to start a new a new grow on that. Okay. Yeah, we're really enjoying um, the arrow grow, and Tom ordered some new little pods, but we haven't needed to use them just yet. Yeah. So. Okay. So everybody, everybody, hang on to that ride. Okay. Right, let me catch up here. So even if you just have the freezer above your fridge, you can still do some batch prepping. So um, like the super cubes help keep everything smaller and more compact. Or if you buy the freezer bags, the like the quart size freezer bags and put your um, whatever it is, your lentils or your beans or whatever it is you have to freeze. And then you can lay those flat and you can stack those and you can actually get a lot of those in your freezer. So, and if you're only feeding one, you know, you don't need to have as much batch prepped for yourself as well. And so, you know, just a little bit will, uh, like you don't have to double recipes either. You can just make a single recipe if you're just feeding one person and um, that way, you know, you're not eating it for weeks on end, but, what I started doing is initially I would make 
um, like two soups a week for a while in order to get a wide variety going in our freezer. And I would make a double batch of it so that I could get um, multiple containers of it to put in the freezer. And that way, you know, if we want Mexican, if we want Italian, if we want, you know, whatever we're like sounds good, then we would have a variety of things to choose from. And we've actually been eating it down really well during the pandemic. Um, and so I'm about ready to start, you know, making some more stuff um, to get our stock back up in the freezer. But it was completely full when the yeah. pandemic started and then we needed to like eat it up. There was a question earlier, it, 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 I caught it, something else, it was asking about how many refrigerators we have. Did you see that one go by? Did, I did not. You didn't answer that one yet. Um, so I don't want to scroll back up and lose my place, but we have this freezer and then we have the garage fridge and then we keep our, our because we you know use a pretty wide variety of potatoes. So we keep those in a, in a even an older refrigerator at a higher temperature, 47 degrees um, out in the shop, out in my shed, so that we can buy. Uh, well, that kind of came out of the pandemic. That when we when we do find mm -hmm. the the Japanese sweet potatoes that are full sized or the Hannahs, we buy up. A, we we're guilty of hoarding them. We buy up. <laughs> we buy up a bunch of Don't them. Tell our secret. And then we store them up in the root cellar, <laughs> refrigerator in the shed. And so, and, and we've noticed that the Yukon gold potatoes, they don't start growing eyes and stuff because we're mm -hmm. storing them at that kind of, uh, you know, old fashioned wintry temperature because mm -hmm. a regular refrigerator setting is too cold to store potatoes. It, it wrecks them. I forget exactly how. Changes so, the sugar. Yeah. So we're the storing them at like them. nature's temperature as if they were still in the ground. Well, it reminds so, us of the cellars that our grandparents had yeah. because my grandparents in Nebraska um, had an old farmhouse. Oh, and a root cellar. There was a the there was a root cellar underneath the house, and there was a door and some steps to get to it from inside the kitchen. But we got mm. down there, and it was a dirt floor. And then my grandpa had made all these bins, and my grandma kept all of her canned goods, mm -hmm. that all the canning that she had done, um, all of her tomatoes and pickles and jams and all of that were down in the root cellar along with the onions and the potatoes. My grandparents had that, well, it had such an interesting earthy smell down it in did. there. It did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Mar and cobwebs too. I did, wasn't, wasn't <laughs> gonna bring up the bugs. Margo, um, I, I was looking at the idea of moving these, these um, basil trees into a pot and you know maybe going out to, I, I think they were probably in our climate, they wouldn't survive outside, uh, it's just too hot. But if I even kept them in a more of a protected area, like on my uh, one of my tables in the garage, and, and got another grow light to go oh. over the top of them, that I could keep. And then I started having fantasies of growing sprouts and stuff. Uh, Dylan did some of that stuff, but he, I don't think he kept doing the, you know, the microgreens. No, I think he is still, he's still doing, doing microgreens. Something. He's not selling them. He's not doing it no, commercially. No, no, kind of as a hobby. But he's so, doing so it there's as a, a hobby. whole other tempting hobby there that I've been contemplating. If I want to get involved in that, when I'm still trying to figure out software and zoom links and and editing software i've kind of got too much on my too much on my plate too many dreams and not enough time to fulfill them all um so um uh, john thank you so much for that nice super chat tammy just pointed that out to me i did not see that happen when did you do that i don't know thank you very oh, I bet much it's, it's, i bet it's down below thank you so very much yeah that's very appreciated Okay. Um, oh, so um, yeah, AJ and Charles are participating in the um, uh, comedy show today. I see somebody's writing about it. Jesse's writing about it. Okay. Yes, they and are. And it was starting at five, I think, because she sent me a text about it. Yeah. Yeah. We tried to watch it last time, but they didn't come on till much later. Yes. So um, let's see. Okay, so yeah, yeah, Faris, we were, that's what we were talking about earlier on the uh, super cubes that we just got these. They were out of stock for a while, and uh, Jacob sent these to us and they arrived just this week. So, and we haven't even used them yet. Yeah, so, the half cup. Yeah. So they have two cup, one cup, and half cup in the super cubes. 
Okay. So I'm very excited to have the half cup. Okay, Miss Tammy, we are coming up on our hour and a half. There is John's super chat, John. I just found I just found that. I must have been uh, over at the sink when that happened. Oh, somebody said that they read that somebody moved their their arrow garden plants to um, pots with dirt and they died. Okay. So yeah, well, I don't think I don't think they would make it outside, not in this climate. You know, there was a question earlier. Did you catch it um, from one of our viewers in Fresno uh, on the on batch cooking the potatoes? That it's so hot in Fresno, they don't get the Bay Breeze like we do. Oh. And so. We, you know, do have our hot days here in excess of 100 degrees, and so we, we Tammy gets up and she'll she'll have potatoes in the oven before six o'clock. Yeah, I was gonna say then on what I'll, what I will do is because I prefer them to be um, cooked in the oven. Now a lot of people do cook their potatoes in their pressure cookers, and they really like them. I just found them to be too wet. And I just don't like the texture as well, but you could experiment with that because it wouldn't heat up your kitchen. But I will just use the Breville on those really hot days because the toaster oven heats up really quick and because it's smaller, it doesn't heat up my kitchen like my uh, wall ovens do. And so I'll just start those potatoes really early and get it over with early in the day before it gets too hot and you know because we just don't want our air con our central air conditioner to have to work overly hard on those really hot days so but you could do it in your instant pot or whatever pressure cooker you have because a lot of people do that and and they like it because it's easy it doesn't heat up their kitchen so um and i can't it's you, it doesn't take very long but you have to google it and see how long because since it's not something that i do i don't remember how long you have to um, put them in for but you do have to put water in the bottom and also um, some people use their slow cooker and so they'll put the potatoes in the slow cooker as well but you'd also have to google that because i've never done that but that's also another way to do them without heating up your kitchen. And that would be maybe a little bit drier and more like the oven doing that. Uh, Marianne's got a question. I have no idea because I, I know that there's pHs involved and our, pot, our plants outside are just potting soil from our local garden center. So I'm, I don't know anything about the science of, of potting soil. So maybe try Googling that one. Um, and um, so somebody who lives in Florida said they always move their mint and parsley. Yeah, they have a lot better humidity there. So, so it's you know, my better. sister Beth that lives in Florida can grow stuff outside that that we can't here because the the relative humidity here is so low by comparison. So somebody else has been boiling their potatoes. That works too. So okay, lots of different ways. Lots of different ways to do our food which okay. is really fun and All right. exciting now we're past 90 minutes okay and some folks might be signed up for the comedy show and they may want to go and do that so moderators i saw you were quite busy today thank you so much we really <laughs> Tiffany, appreciate you guys Jesse, jumping in Randy, and helping i appreciate you doing that um thank you to everyone for being here thank you to our super chat friends appreciate that so much that helps us uh you know keep improving the channel and we look forward to doing that. Yeah. So Tiffany wants to know, she said the walk this morning was beautiful. Have you spotted any new rocks in the rock garden that we go by? <laughs> Keep thinking of the poop emoji. So um, what she's talking about is Sunday mornings on our Facebook page. We, uh, most Sundays, when we go for our morning walk, we've been doing a Facebook Live. And when we do our neighborhood, there's this one house in our neighborhood that they have a real artist that lives there. And th since the pandemic's been going on, they've been taking different size rocks and painting beautiful pictures on them. And so they have a beautiful painted rock garden. I think Miss Piggy was new since. Yeah, I think there were a few. Was, was Miss Piggy on the one? If you go to the Nutmeg Notebook, Facebook page and follow on there. You can scroll up and you can find the the morning walk. It, and it's not the ones we've done in the last two weeks. We've been on the city bike path. You got to go three weeks uh, and before. There's several, mm -hmm. and we and we give everybody a look at the rocks as we go by. Yeah, so. it's really fun. So so if you are up, um, we usually 
try to be um, live by like 7.30, between 7 and 7.30 on Sunday mornings Pacific time. And so if you're up then, you can go to our Make Notebook Facebook page and we try to do um, a live while we're walking. Yeah, our moderators are getting busy again, so we better Uh-oh. go. Uh-oh, people are getting on here. And okay, all right, everybody. Being trolled. Thank you so much. If we missed your question, uh, I'm sorry. It was a busy chat today. Send us, uh, uh, give us a comment. You can, uh, underneath the uh, show notes, the comments on this video, because it will be archived on YouTube. Or send an email to Tom at nutmegnotebook.com or to T-A-M-I, Tammy, at nutmegnotebook.com. And, um, yeah, and then we'll try to answer them next week because we try to go live at 4 p.m. Pacific time every Sunday. We've been like pretty Sunday. much on time for three weeks in a row. I think it was four weeks ago we had a little five-minute delay. So, oh, uh-huh. Yeah, it just depends. Sometimes at the very last minute we'll have a problem with a mic or yeah. or something goes wrong at the last minute. But we try yeah. to be up and running at 4 o'clock. Yeah. So Jesse's saying good night, everyone. See you next Sunday. So I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and, and stay healthy, healthy one meal at a time. time. Bye-bye. Bye, you guys. Thanks for joining us. See you next week.